Then he ordered the manager of his household, fill the men's packs with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money just inside his pack, and put my goblet, the silver one, just inside the pack of the youngest, along with his grain money. He did what Yosef told him to do. At daybreak, the men were sent off with their donkeys, but before they were far from the city, Yosef said to the manager, up, go after the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, why have you repaid good with evil? Isn't this the goblet my Lord drinks from? Indeed, the one he uses for divination? What you have done is evil. So he caught up with them and said these words to them. They replied, Why does my Lord speak this way? Heaven forbid that we should do such a thing. Why, the money we found inside our packs we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. So how would we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Whichever one of us has the goblet, Whichever one of us the goblet is found with, let him be put to death, and the rest of us will be my lord's slaves. He replied, Fine, let it be as you have said. Whichever one it is found, whichever one it is found with will be my slave, but the rest of you will be blameless. Then each hurried to put his pack down on the ground, and each one opened his pack. He searched, starting with the oldest and ending with the youngest, and the goblet was found in the pack belonging to Benjamin. At the time, at this, they tore their clothes with grief. From each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city. Yehuda and his brothers arrived at Yosef's house. He was still there, and they fell down before him on the ground. Yosef said to them, How could you do such a thing? Don't you know that a man such as myself can learn the truth by divination? Yehuda said, There's nothing we can say, my lord. How can we speak? There's no way we can clear ourselves. God has revealed your servant's guilt, so here we are, my Lord's slaves, both we and also the one in whose possession the cup was found. But he replied, Heaven forbid that I should act in such a way. The man in whose possession the goblet was found will be my slave, but as for you, go in peace to your father. Then Yehuda approached Yosef and said, Please, my lord, let your servant say something to you privately, and don't be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My lord asked his servants, Do you have a father or a brother? We answered, my lord, We have a father who is an old man and a child of his old age, a little one whose brother is dead, so that of his mother's children he alone is left, and his father loves him. But you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, so that I can see him. We answered, my lord, the boy can't leave his father. If he were to leave his father, his father would die. You said to your servants, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. We went up to your servant, my father, and told him what my lord had said. But when our father said, go again and buy us some food, we answered, we can't go down unless only if our youngest brother is with us will we go down because we can't see the man's face unless the youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. The one went out from me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I haven't seen him since. Now if you take away the one, now if you take this one away from me too, and something happens to him, you will bring my gray hair down to show with grief. So now, if I go to my... To your servant, my father, and the boy isn't with us, seeing how his heart is bound up with the boy's heart, when he sees that the boy isn't with us, he will die. And your servants will bring gray hair of your servant, our father, down to show with grief. For your servant himself guarded his safety. I said, if I fail to bring him to you, then I will bear the blame before my father forever. Therefore, I beg you, let your servant stay as a slave to my Lord instead of the boy, and let the boy go up with his brothers. For how can I go to my father if the boy isn't with me? I couldn't bear to see my father so overwhelmed by anguish. At last, Yosef could no longer control his feelings in front of his attendants and cried, Get everybody away from me. So no one else was with him when Yosef revealed to his brothers who he was. He wept aloud, and the Egyptians heard, 
the Pharaoh's household heard. Yosef said to his brother, I am Yosef. It is true that my father is still alive? His brothers couldn't answer him. They were so dumbfounded at seeing him. Yosef said to his brothers, Please, come closer. And they came closer. He said, I am Yosef, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But don't be sad that you sold me into slavery here, or angry at yourselves, because it was God who sent me ahead of you to preserve life. This famine, the famine has been over the land for the last two years. And for yet another five years, there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me ahead of you to ensure that we will have descendants on earth and to save your lives in a great deliverance. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made a father. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, Lord of all his household and ruler over the whole land of Egypt. Hurry. Go up to my father and tell him, Here is what your son Yosef says. God has made me Lord over all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You will live in the land of Geshem and be near to me. You, your children, your grandchildren, flocks, herds, everything you own. I will provide for you there so that you won't become poverty stricken. You, your household, and all that you have because five years of famine are yet to come. Here, your own eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that is, my own mouth speaking to you, tell my father how honored I am in Egypt in everything you have seen, and quickly bring my father down here. Then he embraced his brothers Benjamin and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck, and he kissed all his brothers and wept on them. After that, his brothers talked with him. The report of this reached Pharaoh's house. Yosef's brothers have come, and Pharaoh, his servants, were pleased. Yosef, Pharaoh said to Yosef, Tell your brothers, here is what you are to do. Load up your animals, go to the land of Canaan, take your father and your families, and come back to me. I will give you good property in Egypt, and, I will, and you will eat the fat of the land. Moreover, and this is an order, do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt to carry your little ones, your wives, and bring your father and come. Don't worry about your stuff, because everything good in the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel acted accordingly, and Yosef gave them wagons, as Pharaoh had ordered. Gave them provisions for their journey. To each of them, he gave a set of new clothes. To Benjamin, he gave seven and a half pounds of silver and five sets of new clothes. Likewise, To his father, he sent ten donkeys and loaded them with the finest goods of Egypt produced, as well as ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and food for his father to eat on the journey, on the return journey. Thus he sent his brothers on the way, and they left. He said to them, Don't quarrel among yourselves while you're traveling. So they went up out of Egypt, entered the land of Canaan, and came to Yaakov, their father. They told him, Yosef is alive. He is ruler over the whole land of Egypt. He was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe them, so they reported to him everything Yosef had said to them. But it was only when he saw the wagons which Yosef had sent to carry him that the spirit of Yaakov, their father, began to revive. Israel said, Enough! My son Yosef is still alive. I must go and see him before I die. Israel took everything he owned with him on his journey. He arrived at Beersheba and offered sacrifices to God and his father Yitzhak. In a vision at night, God called to Israel, Yaakov, Yaakov. He answered, Here I am. He said, I am God, the God of your father. Don't be afraid to go down to Egypt. It is there. I will make you into a great nation. Not only will I go down with you to Egypt, but I will also bring you back here again after Yosef had closed your eyes. So Yaakov left Beersheba. The sons of Israel brought Yaakov, their father, their little ones, and their wives in the wagons Pharaoh had sent to carry them. They took their cattle and their possessions, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and 
arrived in Egypt, Yaakov and all his descendants with him, his sons, grandsons, daughters, and granddaughters, and all his descendants he brought with him into Egypt. These are the names of Israel, Israel's children who came into Egypt, Yaakov and his sons, Reuven, Yaakov's firstborn, and the sons of Reuven, Hanach, Palu, Hetzron, and Carmi, the sons of Shimon, Yamuel, Yamin, Ahad, Yachin, Zikar, and Shaw, the sons of Canaan, Canaani women, the sons of Levi, Gershon, Chat, Mari, the sons of Yehuda, Er, Anon, Shila, Peretz, and Zerach. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Peretz were Hetzron and Pumel. The sons of Yizachar, Tola, Puba, Yov, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun, Sered, Elin, and Yechelel. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Yaakov in Padan Aram. The daughter of Dinan, in sum, his sons and daughters numbered 33. The sons of Gad, Sephion, Hagi, Shuni, Etzbon, Ari, Aridi, and Areli. The sons of Asher, Yamna, Yashva, Yeshviv, Bria, and their sister Serech. The sons of Bria were Hever and Melkel. These were the sons of Zilpah, whom Liban gave to Leah, his daughter. She bore them Yaakov, 16 people. The sons of Rachel, Yaakov's wife, Yosef, and Benjamin. To Yosef in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whose Asnat, the daughter of Pati Pharaoh, priest of On, bore to him. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Bechir, Eshbel, Gera, Naaman, Achi, Rosh, Mupim, Hupim, and Ard. Here, these are the children of Rachel who were born to Yaakov, in some 14 people. The sons of Dan, Hushin, the sons of Nephtili, Yitzel, Guni, Yitzer, and Shilem. These are the sons of Bala, whom Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter. She bore them to Yaakov, in some seven people. All the people belonging to Yaakov came into Egypt. His direct descendants, not counting Yaakov's sons' wives, totaled 66. The sons of Yosef, born to him in Egypt, were two in number. Thus, all the people in Yaakov's family who entered Egypt numbered 70. Yaakov sent Yehuda ahead of him to Yosef, so that the latter might guide him on the road to Goshen. Thus, they arrived in the land of Goshen. Yosef prepared his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet Israel, his father. He presented himself to him, embraced him, and wept on his neck for a long time. Then Israel said to Yosef, Now I can die because I have seen your face and seen that you are still alive. Yosef said to his brothers and his father's family, I am going up to tell Pharaoh. I'll, sa I'll say to him, My brothers and my family, father's family, who were in the land of Canaan, have come to me. The men are shepherds and keepers of livestock. They have brought their flocks, their herds, and all their possessions. Now when Pharaoh summons you and asks, what is your occupation? Tell him, your servants have been keepers of livestock from, your, from our youth until now, both we and our ancestors. This will ensure that you will live in the land of Goshen, for all shepherd is abhorrent to the Egyptians. 